Hey guys, it's Sam with 2Ms. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to play a game called Cato, and it looks like it's just a cute little visual novel about making friends with cats, which is something I am totally about. So let's go ahead and just get right into it. How to play... Right. Oh, okay. What's our name? Um, oh no, I have two cats. Which one am I going to name it after? Ramac. Macramel. Oh my god, that's so cute. Macramel. Okay. Totally didn't spell Ramel the right way. Here. Macramel. That's my cats. There we go. We're Macramel. <clears throat> Alright, let's see here. Paris is truly a sight to behold. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of reading here. Gotta keep water on hand. Alright. I can't get used to it, even having lived here for most of my life. <coughs> Excuse me. The same parting the city in two, the smell of baked goods in the morning, and the buildings filled with history. Even so, living here alone could maybe be a bit mundane, but I don't have to. I share an apartment with my old friend Roselle, who studies veterinary medicine of some sort. I don't get to spend much time with her as my job's working the evening shift at a small newspaper. Speaking of which, I ought to let her know that I'll be leaving I'll be heading to the office for the night in a bit. Okay. I knock on her door, waiting a few seconds before entering. Wait, we're a person. Wait a minute, we have a job. Wait, we're a person? Oh, I thought we were a cat. <laughs> Whoops. I thought we were going to be cats interacting with other cats. Alright, this is interesting. Hey, Ro, how are you doing? I'm alright, Macromel, and you? All good. Just wanted to let you know I'll be leaving for work in a few. So, are we going to ask about school or ask about today? Hmm. I don't know. She seems a little stressed out. I don't know if I want to ask her about school. Let's ask her about what happened today. So, what have you been up to? Not much. School? Yeah. Worked from home. <laughs> she definitely is not going to want to clean her room. If it's, in a, if it's a mess like this, you don't want to insult her, you know. So, let's see if she wants to go somewhere this weekend. You know what? It's really nice outside and we haven't even gone out for a coffee together. We should totally do so this weekend when we're both free. Well, it has been a while. You know you want to. Some fresh air will feel nice. Maybe. I might have to study, so no promises. Oh, well, would you look at that? Look who came to join us just in time for this cute video. This is Mac. Also known as Mac Attack. Smack. Macaroni. Macadamia. Mac and cheese. He's so cute. He's easily one of the most affectionate cats I've ever had. And he is just six... No, oh, he's going on seven months now, and already, like, look how freaking big he is. Ah, oh, he's so long. It's like a big old cat noodle. I love him. He's soft, too, like a bunny. And he still likes to nurse on my hand, which is a little... I'm getting a little old for that, I feel like, but... As long as you keep it on my hand and not anywhere weird. So, moving on. She glances at the clock above the door behind me. What just happened? Shouldn't you be going soon? What is this? Oh, it's like an auto. You'd wind up late in not too long, right? I'm good on time, actually, but it might be time to break it off. You might be right. I'm off then. I'll pass by the baker's, too. Is there anything you'd like? No, I'm good. All right, then. See you. I love this cat. Your eyes are dirty, though, bud. Got a little something there. I leave her to her own and head for the door. Before leaving, I pat my pockets, realizing that I'm forgetting something. Ro, have you seen my keys? The ones with the cork? Have you looked in the kitchen? I check and find them on the countertop. Do you mind? I always forget to check there. Good thing she still keeps tabs on me, even if things are different now. Don't chew on that, please. Please do not. <laughs> do not. And he's nursing on me. This fucking cat. Oh my god. Alright. So, if things are different now. Different in what manner? I'm seeing hearts and stuff around where we dating? Hey, look. Super Mario. That's funny. Alright, uh... 
Well, obviously it's not going to tell me. Thanks, bye. Bye, I guess. Au revoir. Nerd. Come on. Uh-oh. He's caught sight of my uh, cursor. He's now following it intently. Man, how lucky am I to have a view like this going to work? I think to myself as my feet patter against the rounded stones of the old towpath. In the shade by the wall, I spot a cat, looking every bit as scruffy as the water looks serene. Oh yeah, that's a scruffy cat. Oh, Roselle would love this if she were here. She always used to chase after cats, patiently gain their trust, and befriend them like some kind of cat whisperer. God, just tag me, why don't you? Whenever successful, which was almost always, she memorialized the occasion by having a picture taken, like a big game hunter of old posing with her quarry. I, I pretty much do that. I kind of miss that side of her. Maybe a picture of my own would remind her of the good old days. God, what happened to your friend? The thought stops me in my tracks and I study the cat in question. It's just sitting there, gazing over the water as if saying, Yep, I rule this place. Which, in fairness, it probably did by the looks of things. Uh-oh, Mochi's here. Oh no, she gets so jealous. Hi. Hello. I'm never gonna be able to get through this. I'm never gonna get through this video because of my own animals. They're all, what are you doing playing with video game animals? Look at this, do you see this dog? Do you see her? Pat pat mom. Chop chop. Chop chop bitch, pet me. Rub my tummy. Rub my tummy. Uh oh, now Max getting jealous. Look, I only got two hands, okay? She's gonna have to learn how to share. How do you think Ramel feels? Ramel's almost 10 now, and he's gotta share with you, little young upstarts. Oh, God, everybody's gotta be licking me and sucking on me and getting me wet. It's so nasty. Please stop. I love you, okay? I love you. I love you so much, and your little pink tongue is so cute. It's so cute. Oh, God, do that again. It was very cute. You're not gonna do it again, huh? Oh, so cute very cute. Both of you are very cute, but you're both also in my way now. Oh, I feel so guilty taking my hand. Oh, it hurts my soul. Okay, come on, you two. Seriously. Ugh. Give me a break. <sighs> Alright, so let's see. Looking at the time, I notice that I have plenty of it. Must be nice. I could at least try to get her a picture. He likes to perch there. Alright. What could possibly go wrong, after all, but how should I approach? So, sneak up on the cat, let it know you're there, and closing carefully. Definitely don't want to sneak up. You don't want to sneak up, because then it'll notice you and it'll be mad. Oh yeah, see, you liked that. It sounded like it anyway. Better take it slow here. Slow and steady wins the race, and after all, please stop chewing on this. <laughs> I'm not the sorceress cat whisperer Roselle. I would hate to spook it now from what was clearly, even to me, a favorite spot of theirs. Not that this cat looks particularly skittish, he's nursing on me again. <sighs> Look at this shit. <laughs> how to train your dragon, more like how to train your overly attached cat. Not that this cat looks particularly skittish, it has a very well proud bearing. Hello there, kitty. I speak softly while closing the distance. Oh, hello there, kitty. When I'm merely a few meters away, it gives me a casual glance out of the corner of its eye. I get the idea and stop. Satisfied with my response, it resumes watching over the still water. Oh my god, he's kneading my feet and it tickles. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the arm is better. I could easily just take a picture of the cat's back and call it a day, but my professional pride berates me for even considering such a notion. It may not be the cuddliest cat in the world, but I will get a good photo one way or another. Wait for the right moment, toss a rock, or close the distance. Uh, you don't really want to come in too quick. Definitely wait for the right moment. Patience is key. I've had a lot of uh, experience befriending stray cats. <laughs> More than I care to admit. The cat seems to rather enjoy the view of the water. Ever so slowly I walk up to the edge, maintaining a respectful distance to the cat and sitting down with my legs crossed. The late summer's evening sun shrouding the city in a pink glow, not even the faintest breeze disrupting the mirror, like surface of the water. Oh, look at him. Look at his little eyes. I glance at the cat. It's basking in the sun with closed eyes, savoring the warmth. You need your nails cut. <sighs> Jesus. The moment is here. With careful, deliberate moments, I fish my phone out of my pocket and lean in for a picture. The picture perfectly captures the serenity of the scene. 
Not wishing to disturb the cat any longer, I get up and walk away. Oh yeah, that's a great picture. Oh, that's so cute. Look at that lens, glare, lens flare, excuse me. Oh my god, why does your phone look so jacked up? Looks like my phone. Lemon. <laughs> Is that a reference to something? The reply comes through so fast, it feels like I got it before I even sent the message. That's a gorgeous photo. That cat looks like a stray. How did you manage to get so close? Tell me. I just took my t Oh, fucker. Gotta learn from the best, okay? Ah, the best wouldn't go that far, but thanks. Did it take long to get to that point? Not really, it didn't seem to mind me being in the vicinity as long as it could keep track of me and I did nothing hasty. That pretty much goes for most stray cats. Strays are often kind of chill if you don't bother them. Be careful though, they can be unpredictable. That's true. Kind of got that vibe, yeah. I will be. Almost forgot, thanks for the picture. I think I'll make that my new home screen on my phone. Good chat, Ro, but I need to hurry up now. Lost more time than I thought here. <laughs> Why even offer me a choice? This is just like that other game I played. Like, if the only option is going to work, just cut to it. I, what else could I have done in that situation, you know? Alright. Come on, cat's ticking. Hey, that looks like you, Mac. Boy, somebody really likes trombones. Work went by as usual, and it was over in no time. Dawn is lurking around the corner as I'm heading for the bakery. Oh, you're just scratching. Okay. All the little shops are closed, but the bakers are already at their battle stations, churning out their goods for the breakfast rush and the coming day. Of course you're a baker in Paris. Stereotypical. Thanks to having friends in high places, also known as the owner, I'm allowed to sneak in through the back door and get my grubby hands on bread early. Roselle said she didn't want any, but I'll get her some just in case she changes her mind. Man, I miss that about working at Panera Bread, but that is like the only thing I miss about Panera Bread. The food, it's so good. Man, and as an employee, you got like a 65% discount. Um, and on top of that, we had a, a free bread card, so you could get a free loaf of bread every single week. That was awesome, I miss that. They have really great sourdough. Ugh. They're super overpriced, but they're delicious. Besides, you can never have too much bread. Yeah, that was our, uh, that was our phrase. Praise Mother Bread. Mother Bread. Alright. Oh, look at this big fatty. Oh, that's a Ramel for sure. Oh, he's cute. As I leave the bakery with my precious baked goodness, I notice a cardboard box next to the door, which apparently is the residence of a charmingly fat cat sleeping inside. Clearly it's being cared for to some extent as the floor is draped with a cozy looking blanket and somebody's made it a little roof to keep the rain out. Oh, that's nice. Is it a new tenant on the street or am I selectively blind and it's always been here? I can't recall. Looking around the nearby area strangely littered with glass jars too. Inspired by the success of the earlier cat encounter I decide to add to win further glory. Was this not originally in English? by attaining a second triumphant moment, one to make Roselle the Cat Whisperer proud. I drop my bag and crouch next to the sleeping cat, or what I thought was a sleeping cat. It opens an eye and looks down at me lazily. Oh, he's cute. Uh, I'm gonna wait. Yeah, he, he liked that. Go ahead and uh, size me up, buddy. That's what they do. You wait and let them get their bearings. I say with the exaggerated voice of a movie gunslinger, waiting to let the cat take the first action, not wishing to pressure it in any way. Yeah, no pressure, man. Consent is key. In a shocking display of Herculean effort, the cat opens a second eye and looks at me with steady gaze. Boy, this game is heavy on the hyperbole. I can't help but to feel like it's trying to assess me. It's exactly what it's doing. It is what it's doing. I mean, it's a video game cat. I don't actually know what it's doing. It's doing what it's programmed to do, I guess, but, uh... IRL, yeah. I would expect this much. Oh, okay. Bye, Mac. Really wish you wouldn't get on my table, but... Playing along for a quiet laugh, to myself I strike a pose, showing my good side. Well, if such a thing exists. Aw, oh, don't be so hard on yourself. A few seconds pass before it gets up, lacking any semblance of urgency. Jumps down with the grace of a drunken baboon. Landing on its feet seemingly more by blind luck than any skill on its part. Yeah, that's Ramel. Comes over to me rubbing against my legs with a quiet purr. Well, aren't you a friendly little thing? 
Giving it a few pats along the back before I go, I start to make my way home to that bed which I'm now longing for. Oh, me too, baby, and I'm in it. In this bed. I Literally, my station is my bed. Like, that is where I'm at. Just here on my bed. My laptop is sitting on a uh, TV tray. <laughs> I need to crack this water. I definitely haven't been drinking enough, so... I notice I drink a lot more when I get those little bottles, actually. Maybe it just makes me feel like I'm making more progress. Alright, at least that was this theory. I don't know what... I don't remember where we left off, so... A very persistent furry friend demands more attention, constantly getting in my way, protesting my attempts to leave very efficiently indeed. I can't deny that it's a very charming thing. Cats are one of those things where the fatter they are, the cuter they are, for sure. As it is, I can't really get a good shot at the cat. It's either at a bad angle or too close to the camera. I need to gain some space. Try the selfie camera, stand up, push the cat away. Oh, well, don't startle him, and don't be mean. We're going to try the selfie camera. Oh, okay, he liked that. Maybe I don't need to create distance. I fumble with my pocket as I continue petting the cat with the other hand. In the position I'm sitting, it's difficult to get it out of my pocket and a struggle for a moment. Sorry, Mochi just taste, uh, rem not Ramel, Mac into the, uh, bathroom. You two better be playing nice. Don't make me get up, I'll be mad. Finally, I prevail against these insurmountable odds. Very hyperbole. Very hy hyperbolic. Sorry. Um, place the camera in front of us and snap a bunch of photos, hoping that at least one wouldn't be a blurry mess or of a disaster. I go through them quickly, and there is one close-up picture of the cat's face that didn't end up looking like the photo was taken from inside a tumble dryer. It will have to make do. A few more cuddles later, I manage to extricate myself from the situation and start off in the direction of home. Oh, that's a great picture. Oh, that's so cute. Look at his eyes. That's a Ramel face for sure. Oh, here we go. Text messaging. Oh, my lip is so itchy. Well, perhaps not the best interaction on my part, this picture turned out kind of great. Wow, how did you manage to take this one? After many trials and tribulations, I managed to nab it in the end. That and a prox, 42,372 others that turned out rubbish, but that's beside the point. Rubbish. Ha, I bet. Did you get along well? Kind of. Not bad, not great, I don't think. I was thinking of trying to feed it. What do you mean, not great? This cat was all over you. That's great. First time encounter? Usually it takes a few encounters, and yeah, usually you gotta feed it before they'll get physical with you, unless they were already somebody's pet. That could work. Just don't give it raw fish or something that can make it sick. Is that true? I mean, I guess if it's got parasites. Don't worry, I won't. Generally speaking, cats are uh, pretty good at metabolizing raw meat, though. Yes, hello, Mochi. Mi bella Mochi. What a day. Keychain rattling in my hand, I unlock the door, shutting it behind me. Why are your toe beans so cold? Ah, oh, your little feet are so cold. Why? Oh my god. Good thing I got the heater on. Poor thing. Alright, I unlock the door, shutting it behind me, dumping the bag on the floor by the wall, and trudging on over to the kitchen for a bite to eat before bed. She is licking my foot. This is so... Ah. Please stop. That tickles so much. It tickles. Stop. You're so cute. I trundle past Rose's door. I don't know if that's the appropriate use of the word trundle. Shut, as always. Just a faint blue light leaking through the door frame. She must be on the laptop again. Finally, arriving at the counter, I have myself a few pieces of fresh loaf before dragging myself into the living room and to the TV. Couldn't be bothered to specify what kind of bread you got. I'm just gonna assume it was French bread. But um, Alright. Flopping into the couch, I watch whatever happens to be on, lazily munching away. There's a documentary on about life on the African savanna. It'd be just her thing. After a few minutes of deliberation, I get up, going over to Ro's room, and gently knock on her door. Hey, Ro, you up? Yeah, Macromel, what is it? Okay, ask her to come watch TV, or just checking? Mm, just checking is kind of... Mm, a little judgy, I feel like. I'm just gonna ask if she wants to watch TV with me. Can I come in? Sure. Damn, this girl has not changed her clothes. This is the second day. She also looks very upset. 
she blinked. Oh my god, she's animated. Okay, why don't you come hang out with me? There's a wildlife special on. There's lions and everything, just like we always used to catch. Watch. Hmm. Those letters aren't near each other on the keyboard, so I'm assuming that was intentional. There's a few moments of silence. I'd rather not. I want to be alone. Knowing when not to overstay my welcome, I wish her a good night before gently closing the door and heading back to the couch. God. Poor thing, she's really depressed. I wonder what happened. Alright. Okay, and again with this illusion of choice situation. Okay, well let's go to sleep, I guess. Cat's ticking. Looks like Mac it does. Except he's got a black nose. No pink nose. I don't think I have any pink-nosed animals, actually. hermel has got a brown nose, and Mochi has a black nose. Never having been one for sitting around, come afternoon I treat myself to a walk. Some might think that walking is a bit of a peculiar treat, but in a city like Paris it really is. I love taking walks. Shoot, uh, if you're a photographer, every walk is fun. You always find new things to take a picture of. There's always something beautiful to see, something exciting to discover. Alright. I've been walking around this city virtually every day for years, and it still never bores me. I'm rocking. You should notice that. I can see myself. I have a little camera preview here. <sighs> Starting to get bored of where I'm at. Because I, um, I do take pictures. I do nature photography and macro photography. And, uh... God, I feel like I've just taken a picture of everything in my neighborhood at this point. Because, um... I mean, I've been doing it for like two years and some it's a lot of fun it is a lot like being a hunter actually but without the uh, unpleasant part where you have to murder your catch later um, not because I just take a picture and that's the victory and then you have something permanent to remember it by okay on the contrary it helps dislodge writer's block and distract me from other woes indeed exercise is great for that one of the streets and spots I always come back to, though, is this old little street passing by the small park. The trees happen to make for a great spot to just get away from the sun on a hot day. An added bonus. Okay. Suddenly I spot an orange fuzz in the periphery and I instinctively know it's a cat. It's funny the things you notice once you're actively looking for them. Well, it's either that or I've been afflicted with cat-engineered nanomachines altering my perception, which in all honesty is a touch unlikely. Yeah, a touch. Oh, he's a little munchkin cat! Oh, he's a kitten! Rather than a fully grown cat, this one's a mere kitten playing with the leaves beneath a tree. Oh, he's adorable. Look how freaking cute he is. I'm a sucker for ginger cats. Oh, that face! They've perfectly captured his freaking body uh, language. Playtime is disrupted, however, when a pedestrian tramples by, startling the little creature. After having taken cover by the tree for a while, it tentatively returns to its game, soon blissfully distracted. People just walking by this kitten out here by himself? He's got a collar and stuff, too. Where is his owner? This is a little disturbing to me. I'm a little, I'm a little worried about him. I'd love to join in, but I don't want to frighten it again, either. So sneak closer, not drawing attention, or let it know you are getting closer. Definitely don't betray your presence to a kitten. Kittens and cats are a totally different thing. Uh, yeah, you definitely... Like, with a cat, if they notice you sneaking up on them, they immediately assume you're a threat. With a kitten, they're a lot jumpier than that, and if you want to get closer, you definitely have to be sneaky, because if they see you coming, they book it. So... Let's go ahead and give that... Oh, okay, see, so yeah. See, I'm right. I'm an expert on this crap. If it's unaware of my presence, then surely it can't be scared, right? Oh, but it can. Whenever the kitten's distracted by its play, I approach with soft, quiet steps, gradually making my approach. I can't speak all of a sudden. Let me drink some water. Hmm. Making sure my brain's wet enough here. Oh. At a short distance away, the kitten stops looking directly at me, which would likely indicate that it's now aware of me. I would say that absolutely indicates that it's now aware of you, but... You know. I avoid looking directly at it, acting as if I don't know it's there at all. Okay, good call. The kitten doesn't resume playing, but it doesn't appear to be terrified or even particularly bothered by me either. I should try to build its trust. Play with it using a stick, tell it about your day. Mm, 
You don't want to come at it with props too soon. Go ahead and start talking so it gets used to your presence. Maybe I can get across my friendliness through a casual conversation. I go on to tell the kitten about my day, the cat by the canal, my night shift at work, and about the other cat by the cafe. Stop, Mochi, quit licking my feet. It's really not sanitary. While facing in the general direction of the cat, I don't look directly at it, trying to communicate that I'm no threat to it. Oh, he's so cute. I cast a quick glance at it, and the kitten is watching me carefully, but seems less withdrawn, more curious. Let's play with it. Oh yeah, he likes that. Well, it's obviously a rather playful sort. Maybe that'd help me befriend it. The tree beside us has kindly dropped, kindly enough, dropped a twig on the ground that looks like it could double as a cat toy. Honestly, the best cat toys are just a bunch of freaking trash anyway. Like... Never waste money buying a cat toy. Literally, when I got Mac a couple months, just a few months ago, you know, all, I made all of his toys out of satin ribbon that I just tied together, uh, some feathers that I glued to the ribbon, um, what do you call those again? The ribbon, uh, whatever, you get what I'm saying, the roll. Um, and then uh, I stuffed some socks with a... Uh, Stuffed animal stuffing, you know, and uh, catnip. And put little button eyes on him and stuff. Man, he was having a freaking ball with that. Some jingle bells. All stuff you can get at a craft store for like a buck. So, cat toys are a waste of money. Picking it up, I give it a try, drawing a figure of eight in the air. But I've never played with a cat. Sure, it can't be too complicated, but how I should go about it is still a question that needs answering. All right, large swaying motions. Nope, you're gonna scare him. Small rapid movements. Might also scare him. Avoid sudden movements. Oh yeah, okay, see, he liked that a lot. With the kitten being easily scared, I feel like it would be detrimental to be too aggressive. Instead, I start with the stick some ways off. Starting slow and carefully adding speed while changing directions. Oh, look at him go. The kitten's eyes are soon set on the tip of the twig and following it curiously. With the kitten's attention, I dare go closer and as the stick passes by, it swats after the stick with its paw. Oh, look at him! Look how excited he is! He's so happy! Oh, look how happy he is! He's so happy! Look at his little eyebrows! He's so cute! Another gentle swoosh of the stick and the kitten jumps in, chasing the toy to its full extent. It pounces on it and holds it down with its claws. I let it have its victory before carefully jiggling it out of its grip. The kitten's eyes are brimming with light. It is something Roselle must see. I fumble with my free hand as I continue to distract the kitten with the twig. I managed to get a hold of my phone, turn the camera on, and get the picture taken. Instead of taking my leave right away, we play some more. But a group of loud youngsters, ah, young upstarts, startle it again and it scurries off. I'd love to meet it again. Ah, oh, it's so cute! Look at him! Oh, he's so cute! I love ginger cats, they're so cute. Oh, here we go, texty messaging again. With not a small sense of pride, I relay the brilliant image to Ro. Clearly, I'm not the only one to recognize its quality. That has to be the cutest thing I've seen in ages. I know, I've never spent as much time with uh, cats or other critters as you have, but it's easy to see the appeal now. They're lovely, aren't they? Such an adorable little kitten with the bell and everything. Wish I had a cat like that. Reminds me of my first one when I was a kid. Well, you could! Because some irresponsible jackass has let this tiny kitten out of their home. And it is currently in danger. If that cat was anything like this one, it's easy to understand your obsession, haha. <laughs> I'll be home soon. I can see her begin to type, then stop, erase, and type again. This goes on for a little while until the word OK shows up. A bit underwhelming maybe, but at least I roused her for a little while. That's true. You never cure people in a day. When I get home, I enter Rose's room. Mm, she doesn't look any better, she's wearing the same clothes. Just wanted to let you know I'll be visiting the bakery lunchtime tomorrow. I need to grab a cake for Rico from work's birthday. If you want to come along, I'm sure the cat will be there. I think I'd rather stay here. They say it's going to be really very hot out tomorrow. But if you do see it, you know the rule, right? Right. When you see a cat for a second time, you must name it, I remember. What the hell kind of rule is that? You don't name the cat until you start, like, feeding it and keeping them. Like, they're your pet once you start doing that. Also, can I save this game? Is there a way you can save? I'm, I'm kind of afraid to try because I don't want to have to go redo all of this, but we're currently like just about a half an hour here. Uh, 
I'm gonna have to go to bed eventually. I have a day job, so. Okay, well, let's get through this. I'll head out again and go to work soon. Good luck. Went down by the canal. I keep an eye out. I keep and eye out. <laughs> I keep an eye out for the scruffy cat, but I don't run into it again. Go to work, I guess. That's all we can do. Work turns out like usual. Pretty uneventful. Hmm. Okay, and? And the cat ticks on. Into the night. Into the night. Okay. After some well-deserved sleep, I head out to grab that cake. To be honest, I'm more excited at the chance of seeing that cat again than to celebrate my coworker. I'm always more excited to see cats than my pe than people I know. Cats are just so much more fun. They're so soft and cute, and they never argue with you or start uncomfortable conversations about politics or let on that they don't support human rights and, you know, terrible shit like that. Anyway, I should get the cat something. It looks like one that would appreciate something edible. Is that a fat joke? I take a quick detour to a grocery store and quickly find myself in the small pet aisle. I have no idea what the cat likes, and the pictures of the jars littered around its bed pop into my mind. Maybe they had contained something it liked, but I can't quite remember what label it had. What should I buy? Did it say what was on the label? What comes in? I mean, obviously, I feel like most cats would jump at the chance for shrimp, but I, we mentioned not getting... They mentioned not getting raw fish. It doesn't say cooked shrimp. I don't feel like cats would really like olives. Let's go with, let's just go with, no? What? No? Hang on, hang on a second. Wait one minute here, I wanna know. What exactly do you think cats like? Let's uh, do, do, do. So, the shrimp, okay, yeah, he's happy. Glass jar, really? Where do you buy where do you buy shrimp that is in a glass jar? That's odd. Seafood perhaps? Shrimp most likely. I can't for the life of me recall what labor label had been on that jar, but surely this couldn't work out too badly. Shrimp are fantastic. But just in case it doesn't enjoy oh okay, so I get both, basically. I, I give up and just get both. Hi fat little cat. When I reach the bakery I find the cat resting in its makeshift bed yet again. Good afternoon to you, cat. Cat looks at me as if saying afternoon, all without moving very much at all, and it's cozy to a little nook. Yeah, they're good at that. Can't ever recall seeing any living thing so visibly content with everything. They're good at that, too. Ro would absolutely adore this cat. As her apprentice, I must follow her word and give it a name. Oh, we get to name it! Okay, cool. So this is definitely Ramel. This cat just fucking is everything Ramel is about. Does Ramel work for you, buddy? Ramel half yawns, half meows. That's close enough to approval for me. I wonder if it will approve my choice of snack to the same extent. Getting the lid out of the way, I go fishing for shrimp. Catching one, shaking off some of the water before handing it over to Ramel. The shrimp quickly grabs its attention, sniffing the food. Gives it a lick before biting, causing me to drop it. I would prefer keeping my fingers, so I leave it to Ramel. Good policy. Ramel devours the small crustacean and then continues to look around the bed for more. I grab another shrimp, making sure the cat sees it, and Ramel reaches out a paw to try and grab it. <laughs> Yeah, that's Ramel. I give it to the cat, but I feel inspired to try something out. I could have an opportunity to make Rem here to make Ramel earn the snacks. It would actually be kind of cool if I could teach Ramel a trick. So what should I attempt to teach it? Hmm. What are we gonna do, huh? I think the easiest one would be to get him to talk. High five would be pretty cool, but I don't I don't see a cat doing that. Mochi can high five. You can high five, can't you? You want to try? Come here. Hey, come on. Sit. Shake. Good girl. Hey, high five. Yeah, good dog. Good dog. High five. Yeah, good girl. You get it, right? Oh, you're such a good dog. I love you. Now we got to give her a treat, though. Ugh. I got a drawer in my bed that's uh, specifically for all the pet stuff. Oh, come on. Open sesame. Oh, that was the wrong drawer anyway. Okay. I don't, I couldn't tell if that was... Were you licking my hummingbird? She was getting him wet. Alright. 
What could we get you here? Boy, I can't believe it, but I think I need to get you some more treats. How about a bite of Chewy, huh? How do you feel about that? Huh? You want Chewy? Do you want a Chewy? Where are you going? She just ran out of my bedroom. Did, yeah, do you want this Chewy or not? You're only going to get a half Chewy because it's, it's bedtime. But oh, Come here. <laughs> come here. Oh, sorry. Come on. Come on. Come here. <sighs> here we go. Come on. You can have it, but you gotta come get it. Come here. Come on, I just want you to come on camera. Here you go. No. <laughs> she's such a good girl. She's too obedient for her own good. Here you go. Just take it. Good girl. <laughs> too good. Too good girl. You're too good. And there she goes, under my recliner. Because <laughs> she thinks that's where, uh, she thinks the cats can't get her stuff if she puts it down there. All right, so we're gonna teach him to talk. Ramel's a fairly expressive fellow. It'd be fun to have it meow on command. To begin with, I'll have to choose a word that will be the prompt to make the cat meow. What word should I use? Uh, uh, I don't know. Hmm. This is easier with dogs. So, what should uh, what should our word be here? Mainly, I just reply to my cats. They meow just fine without any prompting. Um. Well, we could go with the uh, ever simple treat. Treat shall be the word of the day. Now let's get down to business. I grab a treat. Ramel has meowed to beg for food or attention before, so it shouldn't be impossible to lure out of it. Treat. I hold the snack next to my head, well out of reach, but clearly within sight. Ramel, oh, look at those eyes! Ramel is looking at the tree with those big cheeky eyes and tries to uh, reach out a paw to touch me. I will not be persuaded, avoiding it and repeat my code word. Ramel lets out a subdued meow and I immediately reward it with a snack. I repeat the process with a new treat. Treat. As soon as the cat meows, it gets a treat. The third time it catches on quickly. It may be more than a tad fat and slow. Hey! Damn! I mean, you're right, but jeez. Don't assume that his fat and slowness has anything to do with his competence. I mean, you don't get fat like that being incompetent, let's be honest. Especially as a cat. It may be more than a tad fat and slow, but it is clearly every bit as quick thinking. Yeah, bitch. Ramel meows slyly before I say the code word, and I ignore it as the word was the key here. Nice try. You don't just get a treat every time you meow, it's only when I tell you to meow. Treat. Ramel immediately meows, and then again. Then thrice. A fourth. Fifth. And a sixth time. Oh no, what have I done? It just goes on and on and on like a broken record. I have created a monster. <laughs> I can't even reward the first meow that was correct. This is ridiculous. It takes a long period of stonewalling those begging meows before Ramel goes quiet again and I hide away the treats. Probably best to end it there before things escalate out of control. Maybe a good cuddle would get Ramel to forget about this whole mess. Alright, well let's scratch his, his cheeks. Cats like that. Those puffy cheeks look fit for a good scratching. Ramel loves getting his cheeks scrubbed. Using the tip of my finger, I gently scratch its cheek before moving to scratching it just behind the jaw. Ramel clearly approves, a humming purr radiating from a very pleased cat. It angles its head to give me better access, and the scratching continues for a few moments before it turning its head to the other side, and the process is repeated. Oh, look at his little tongue sticking out. I didn't notice that before. Was it always like that? Ah, oh, it's so cute. Ramel's purrs slowly grow more quiet until it drifts off into a nap, its head resting against my hand. Oh, Ramel does that. Ever so carefully, I lower its head onto a bundle of the blanket bedding, succeeding in doing so without waking Ramel up. I realized that I had already spent much more time with Ramel than I had intended, and I need to pick up that cake already. Hesitantly, I give Ramel a last pat on the head before saying my goodbyes and escaping into the bakery. Alright, about to hit 40 minutes here. It's bustling with more activity than usual. 
When the owner scurries by, I receive the great news. Business has been going well, and they were moving to a new, bigger place not too far away. I congratulate her, apologize for not having much time to chat before taking my leave, cake in hand. You probably should at least get the new address if you like this place. Oh, French bread flour. Guess I was right. I'm home! Unlike the usual silence, Ro calls for me. Macromel, can you come over here for a minute? Wouldn't she last been the one to call out to me? That's something I haven't considered being a possibility in a very long time. I walk over to her room. Oh, she got dressed. Yes. Roselle plays with her hands as if she is unsure how to bring up the subject. Thank you for the photos, they were nice. However, yes. That kitten. Was there anyone with it? I think you know there wasn't. No, it was alone, I think. Isn't that strange? For a kitten to be all alone, I mean. Yeah, it is. I guess, but it had a collar, so it might just live nearby. No. No, you don't do indoor-outdoor kittens. It's bad enough doing an indoor-outdoor cat. You might as well just say, Man, I'd love it if my cat just got hit by a car. Or attacked by coyotes. Or raccoons. Or kidnapped. And sacrificed to demonic gods. She doesn't look convinced. Yeah, me neither. You know what, I'll see if I spot it on my walk and make sure. That would be great. Alright. Do you want to come and see it? Come on. Bitches love kittens. I can see how she considers it. How her, brow, her brows furrow and her eyes trace the crevices of the floorboards. It might get scared with yet another stranger around. Best you go alone. Scared of frightening it. It's not an excuse I've ever heard from Roselle, the great cat whisperer. Well, she looks like she might be out of sorts. Maybe this case is a little bit more delicate, but it's not like the kitten trusts me either. Okay, but the kitten already has experience with you. You start bringing other people around, numbers frighten kittens. However, she doesn't want to, I can't force her. I'll just do my best then, wish me luck. Good luck. Okay, well that's the first smile we've really seen. Empowered by her blessing, I head out. Just before leaving, I put the cake in the fridge and make my way to the old pedestrian street again. Okay, well, at least it's a pedestrian street, so getting hit by a car is unlikely, but as long as he stays there, you know. I'm surprised to see the kitten sitting next to the tree, just like it had the other day. It feels a little strange to find such a young cat out here all alone again. I would like to have a closer look at its collar, as it might have a number or an address on it. Oh, look at you, you're so cute! Oh, it's so cute. The kitten is sitting next to the tree trunk, looking at the passersby. Looks healthy, so somebody must be feeding it at least. Hmm. Really hope that I'm just overthinking it. From our last meeting, I know I should be careful when I approach it. No sudden movements or sounds that will scare it. Having made my... <laughs> oh. You just... It, the body... They really perfectly captured the body language here. This is really... That's really great. Having made my approach, I speak to it softly to get its attention. Hey, little friend. We need a proper name for you too, don't we? Oh, we get to name him. Hmm. I had a ginger cat, actually. We've had a couple of them. But this one, uh, I was there when she was born, actually, and I was like five or six years old, I think. But uh, she was there all the way up until I think I was maybe 13-ish. Because I, I feel like she passed away when I was, uh, it was like seventh or eighth grade. Um, I love that cat so much. But, uh, I don't know. She was a ginger tabby. They don't really look anything like, but she was one of my most beloved cats. And they haven't given us a sex here yet for this cat, but you know, I, I feel like Flair's pretty unisex. Hey, whatever. Who cares? It's a cat. Don't gender your cat. Flair, what do you think of that? The kitten glances at me with big eyes, which I decide to be in approval. Hmm. This reminds me that I still have cat treats in my pocket. Maybe Flair will like them. But I'm not the only one with eyes for the kitten. The kid separates from his mother's hand to chase the kitty. Aw, oh, asshole. Flair runs away, but in my direction. Damn, lady, get a handle on your kid. I can't let it get away. Okay, let's follow the kitten. Yeah, you don't want to stop him. It's probably best to let it run. Yeah, because if you try to grab him right now, he's just going to turn into a blender. The kid's got by his mother, so I don't have to worry about him anymore. Oh, 
I follow the kitten around the corner and find it hiding in a doorway. This just makes me want to freaking snuggle something tiny and soft. Its body is pressed into the corner and its eyes watch me carefully. The ordeal has gotten me pretty close. Maybe I have a chance here? Let's toss a treat to him. I don't want to get too close. Yeah, see, he loved that. I've done that before, too. Toss treats to get kittens. Well, there's no twigs for to use for play, and even if there were, I'm not sure that that'd be a good idea. He's not in the mood. No. Maybe a bite to eat would help the little creature feel at ease. This situation isn't exactly what I'm used to, but I believe in the versatile powers of food. Dude, no joke, though. Like, food is the fastest way to any creature's heart. Animal, human, doesn't matter. Strays, ferals, freaking become associated with the food, become friends. That's how it works. If you give them enough food and you're patient and you never meet whatever response they have for you with aggression and you give them your spa their space, eventually they're going to be friendly to you. I crouch down and toss a treat carefully so it lands next to the kitten. Oh, it snaps its eyes on the new object and sniffs the air. When it's convinced it won't move again, it sneaks up on the treat and eats it. Oh, look at him. Hmm, what was that delicious thing? When finished, it sniffs around the ground for more. I throw another one, and the projectile makes Flair shy away before quickly returning to eat the food. I throw the treats closer and closer to me so Flair can get within reach. However, Flair becomes aware of that and grows more careful approaching the treats, backing away when it has grabbed them. It's a slow process, but I get the kitten close enough. Mochi is like, man, I sure don't like you playing this game that's all about cats. Way to remind me that I'm, I'm a dog. Way to remind me how much you love cats. Jesus Christ. You see this dog's freaking crazy capacity for licking. And she has like the stickiest tongue too. I don't know what's up with that. You're so lovable. I love you. You're so sweet. That's my baby. Hey baby doll. Hello puppy doll. I love you. Who's daddy's girl? Huh? Who's my little princess? Mia princesa. I love you. Love you. All right. Well, you can uh, you can keep doing that if you want, I guess. So we're gonna try to feed it out of our hand. I slowly pick out a few treats and place them on my palm. I extend my hand slightly in front of me, making sure the kitten can see them. Yeah, she's just obsessively licking my hand right now. Flair looks at them but hesitates, so I throw one of them halfway between us. The kitten crouches down and sneaks up to the treat, carefully watching me. After snacking on the nearest treat, it looks curiously at my hand, stretching its head out. Yeah, yeah, come here. It takes a reluctant step towards me, and I have to stay com I have to stay completely still. That's right. Movementless, like a s motionless, maybe? Motionless, like a statue, a gargoyle on Notre Dame. Or maybe not a gargoyle. They come to life, right? Only in Saturday morning cartoons. As Flair gets closer, it grows braver and walks up the last steps to smell my hand. I feel its whiskers tickle my fingertips, but I stay still as a mountain. Flair takes the first treat, and I can clearly hear it snap as it bites into it. One after another, the treats disappear until my hand is empty. She is grabbing my hand to make me scrub her chest. <laughs> pets are great. I love pets. I know Flair won't like it, but I'll still have to grab it to check its collar. Ah! My hand eases closer and picks the kitten up. I quickly press it against my chest to stabilize it. Flair tenses up as soon as I touch it, but feels slightly calmer after a few seconds in my bosom. More bosom, titty kitty. There you are, such a good kitty. Come here, baby doll. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, excuse me. I try to soothe the kitten and gently stroke it with my thumb. Oh, where's your other tooth though, buddy? When it is calm, I place it on my lap to check the collar. Flair meows and I find a phone number that I write down on my phone. When that is done, I loosen my grip and stroke the kitten gently to make it forget my manhandling. That's the way it's done. Then I have to let go and Flair scurries away, but I don't think we are back on square one. I leave some treats on the ground in case it comes back and leave. I can't believe you just left that cat there a second time. Are you serious? I absolutely would have taken it home. I brought a German Shepherd home with me one time because it had a freaking tag. Shoot, I bring home unlabeled kittens all the time. Hey, you look a little better. I got a number. Flair had one on its collar. Oh, and I followed your rule. I named it. I also forgot to mention that I named the bakery cat as well. It's Vermel. 
Yeah. What are we waiting for? Call it. She looks a little miffed. I type in the number and let the signals go by. They go on for longer and longer. No answer? Doesn't appear so. I'll have to try again later. Well, keep me updated. Well, she seems to be excited about this. I will. Alright, let's go to work. I try to call a few more times. Eventually I give up and head out for work. Hmm. I don't approve of this. I don't. Oh, oh. There are slow news days and then there's dead news days. Need to get something published today or my boss will do something. I accidentally clicked that too quickly. Might as well have a stroll and see if I can at least find something worth writing about. The city beautifully lit in the dark as I find my way down to the towpath is probably one of the prettiest spots around here. Another advantage it has going for it is the fact that for some arcane reason, again, I think you're misusing the definition of arcane, almost nobody ever goes there, rendering it a quiet place for thoughts to be had. Hang on a moment, what's that sound? Yeah, it's a cat fight. My pondering is interrupted by aggressive growling and a tremendous noise near the bridge. My curiosity is getting the better of me and I suddenly walk over to check the source of the racket. Oh. Here we go, old reliable here. Old faithful. Are you telling me getting tired? We're going on an hour now. In the glow of lamplight, there's a group of cats staring at each other, hissing and swatting their paws. Four of them seem to be working together against a somewhat larger, rougher looking one. Could it be the same one as from the other day? It looks like it and appears to be in trouble. Let's see, let them resolve it amongst themselves, try to interrupt the fight, pour water over them. I mean, realistically, you don't want to let them fight. I mean, yeah, you really don't want to let them fight because that's. They get injuries and stuff. A stray cat could get an infection. So I don't know if I'd want to pour water over them, though. I'm going to scare all these cats. So I'm going to try to interrupt them. Be mad, I guess. I can't let them fight, so I run up shouting, flailing my arms, and causing a general stir, hoping to end the tussle. Much like most readers of the paper, they couldn't care less about my attempt <laughs> and roll about in a ball of claws and hissing anger. Wow, you're ineffective. I've broken up cat fights before, it's really not that hard. Usually, as soon as they see me, they book it. I don't even have to do all that much work. I have nothing to break up the fight with. Your large flailing body? <laughs> they don't care in the slightest about my opinion on the whole fighting business, and putting a hand in there would likely end in roughly the same manner as shoving it into a wood chipper. Throw your sweater on him. Uh, I don't know, shove a foot in there. Don't kick him, I mean, nudge him a little. With your foot, with your heel. Heal them. Okay. Can't do much other than looking on helplessly as they fight it out. In the end, it's the lone cat that comes out on top and chases away the rapscallions, but it's visibly weary, its chest heaving with ragged breathing. I walk closer wanting to help it, but it gives me one quick look of disappointment that causes me to stop dead in my tracks. I guess that it was none too pleased about my interruption. What? But clearly this cat is a cut above most and it deserves some form of distinction. Well, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute here. You're telling me I did the wrong thing, breaking up a cat fight? What, because I injured its pride? Huh. I mean, in real life, cats are not that complex. Like, this cat is obviously pretty, pretty freaking sapient, if that's the case. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and try that again. Let's try that again. What do you want me to do? Want me to dump water on him? Let's do that. Let's try that. Might as well. Jesus Christ, stop. It's so loud. Okay, we're gonna pour water on these fuckers. What? You liked that? Ah, oh, I have a bottle of water in my bag and I'm not afraid of using it. I run at the scuffle. Hey! They don't pay me much heed, though. I unscrew the cork of my doomsday device. God, it's so hyperbolic. Ah. Uh, and unleash a raging torrent at the cats. Well, at least as much of a raging torrent as a bottle would allow. While my aim is not perfect, I do manage to hit the four upstarts. Upstarts. But the older cat ends up being collateral damage in the process. See, that's what I was worried about. The youngsters dart into the night, hissing with displeasure, and the re remaining cat stays with me. It stands alert and stares at me with those piercing eyes. Can't say it looks particularly happy at the present. Breaking eye contact with a nod, it starts to clean off the water with its tongue. Ah, oh, maybe the cat is at least a little bit appreciative for the help? 
It's hard to tell, and that leaves me feeling like both the conquering hero and the ill-willed villain. Are you telling me I would have gotten better results just letting him fight? I don't believe it, sir. I don't believe it at all. Whatever. I'm not going back again, so... In the end, I think it does know that I was trying to help. I stay for a good while, making sure that the pack of rascals don't return. In the meantime, I should come up with a name for him. <sighs> we haven't really had any great tabbies. Well, my Bose family has. They actually had a couple. A, uh, sibling duo. A gray, um, tortoiseshell, I guess. I don't know. She was multicolored, but she wasn't like a tortoise shell the way you think about it. But she wasn't really like a calico either. There was no black on her. But uh, her name was Mumbles. And then she had a, a tabby brother named Leroy. Yes, that Leroy. Leroy Jenkins. And I think that that's appropriate here. Leroy also means the king. I forget what language. I want to say French, actually. Anyway. More time passes before I address the cat in a relaxed tone. Okay, Leroy, time for me to go. I've got work to do, but I'll see you around. I turn around and continue on my way down the canal. A few moments later, I notice a shadow out of the corner of my eye by my left foot. Looking down, I find that Leroy has decided to come along. We follow the canal in silence, a feeling of mutual respect in the air. Maybe we have some things in common after all. Oh, look at him. He's so cute. Look how happy he is. A few more minutes go by before the cat stops, sitting by the water once again. I feel oddly compelled to find a justification for staying here. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I'm gonna... I don't know. He'd probably like some food. He's looking a little skinny there. What? You don't want food? This is bullshit. I still have a few treats left, so I fish them out of my pocket and crouch down, offering them for my hand. Leroy looks at me with a spark of suspicion glinting in the eye, not making any move to approach. I throw a treat between us in case it just doesn't want to get close to me. It walks up to the tree with a scowling expression and swats it dismissively into the water below. This cat's ridiculous. I have never once met a cat that, like, sometimes if they're nervous when they first meet you, they'll turn down a snack, but, uh... Yeah, I never met a cat that just willingly... Like, this is the most meta cat I think I've ever seen. Never seen a cat turn down a treat. Note to self, Leroy really doesn't like cat treats. Why the fuck not? Alright. Well, I definitely don't want to touch him after that, so I guess we're going to do the only other thing we could do. Which, for some reason, he enjoys. Well, if cats don't like these things, why even bother lugging them about? The kitten liked them just fine. Flair liked them. What the fuck is this? I weigh a treat in my hand, feeling its weight and shape. I calculate the perfect skip toss in my mind before reeling back. My whole body following into the throw, and I unleash the treat with flawless timing. Cuts through the air with a purpose, its destination preordained, the outcome already determined. It's actually well written. Some nice prose right there. With a graceful arc, it drops out of the air, maybe two feet away, hits the surface, and sinks with an undignified plop. Me, anytime I try. Leroy does show signs of amusement. And thusly encouraged, I repeat the procedure until I run out of sweets. Last one managing to skip maybe a centimeter or so. Sweets? What kind of cat treats are sweet? Oh, where'd you go? While certainly not the smoothest of friendships, I get the feeling that Leroy is at least somewhat less indifferent towards me. Leroy and I would have to part ways for now, but I'm looking forward to meeting it again. Once back at work, inspiration hits me. I always write a little piece about the issue of abandoned cats around the city. After all, I never noticed it before, so bringing it to light might result in some good. Maybe. Unless they treat stray cats the way that my neighborhood treats homeless people. Okay, and I'm gonna have to cut it here. I, I have no idea how to, like, stop this game. I don't know how to... I don't... I don't know. There's no obvious save button. But I can't imagine that they expect you to play through this whole long thing. All in one. Returning home... In the more what? No, I want to. What? What if I wanted to say? How do I save? Wait, tutorial. How to play? Menu home. Or auto play skip. But nothing on how to save. I'm very confused here. Wait, how do I get out of this now? 
Uh-oh. I don't know what I did. Hang on. Let me try something here. Come on. Uh, maybe it's in the corner where my uh, webcam preview is. I wouldn't be able to tell. Oh, okay. So I can close that. What the heck, though? Settings? No. Resume. What the fuck? When am I supposed to save? Hmm. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Oh my god, we're already over an hour now. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Okay, so let's see. Uh... I don't exactly remember what I was trying to do with this. That's right. I gotta remove the preview from the overlay. Okay. Did it work? Ah, oh, am I gonna have to close out and then... Ah, uh, well, either way, I'm gonna have to cut it here. If I have to skip ahead in the next game, I guess I'll do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I enjoy everything that's remotely related to cats. So if you got any other cat related game suggestions I should play, um, go ahead and make a suggestion in the comments. Otherwise, uh, I'm going the fuck to sleep and I hope that you will do the same. So good night. <laughs>